Hello, Exolot. It's been a long time. I don't think I've ever taken a break this long from YouTube before, but I did it because I had exams and I really wanted to lock in, you know? I still don't think I did very well anyway, so it was all worth nothing. But anyways, I have returned with more unnecessarily revealing information about myself for your entertainment. Now, if you've watched my crush video, you'll know that I rarely have crushes on real people, especially when it comes to guys. I don't think I remember the last time I've had a legit crush on someone, except for this person. And this is something that I thought I would take to the grave with me forever. But I would like to come forth about this today. So I prepared a PowerPoint presentation and I want you guys to tell me um, how much aura I lost as an individual for having a crush on this person. First, um, we're going to call this person state which is short for state of the world because thinking about both of these makes me want to kill myself. Now, before we begin with the experiences, I'd first like to justify my reasons for liking him so that you will understand what coerced me. What, what vile seduction tactics this man used on me. Well, hello there, fellas. It's been a while, but Businessman Fell is here back again to let you know that this video is sponsored by yeah. Fashion Chingu. Thank you Fashion Chingu for feeding me through university. If you still aren't aware, Fashion Chingu is an online e-commerce fashion shop that offers a wide variety of clothes that look similar to the ones worn by idols. Whether it be popular K-pop groups such as New Jeans, Blackpink or Seventeen, or K-dramas such as Penthouse, Fashion Chingu has got you covered. If you're anything like me and you want to spice up your fashion style every few months to give yourself an ounce of dopamine, then this is the right place for you. Not to mention, Fashion Chingu has also launched a new category called K-pop meme clothes that contain banger lines that I relate to regularly. Even if not everyone gets the reference, it's still suitable for daily wear and offers you 5% more personality. So what are you waiting for? Visit Fashion Chingu today and use my code FALI10 for 10% off your purchase. Thank you again to Fashion Chingu for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the train wreck. Basically, I had a friend, okay, and they bought like a bunch of these bootleg, um, probably illegal sunroof stickers to our school. And they were like, oh, do you guys want some? I'll give it to you. And State got really excited. Like he was so genuinely excited at these sunroof stickers. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I wish I could say there was more to why I like him. But unfortunately, this was all it took. I never really see any guys that like these things, you know. And I thought like, oh, it's such a green flag that he likes Andrew stickers. And now first, I want to talk about the pros of this guy in order to justify the crush I have for him. Get ready. Number one, he's not homophobic. What more could you ask for in the man? Oh my goodness, like, is this not the second coming of Mother Teresa? Second. He is not racist, as far as I'm aware. I don't, I didn't know him like long enough to figure out if he was actually secretly racist. But hooray! Points for basic decency. But oh, that's not all. Number three, he respected my identity. Mm. He did not call me slurs. Did he respect me as a person? No, but he respected my identity. Now for further context of everything that happens next, I will go into the relationship we had, okay? We were never established like... I forgot the word. Couple, we were never an established couple. But were we in a situationship? My friends call it that. I don't know what it is. That's why I want you to decide! Alright, here are a timeline of things that happened to help you with this. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, he called me the prettiest guy he knows. But then again, nothing wrong with a homie complimenting another homie, you know? Number two, he told me he loves me. Again, nothing wrong with letting your homie know that you love him. All completely platonic, reasonable, nothing to look into stuff. Number three. <laughs> Like I, ha I'm, I have to tell you guys. But when he said that, like when he made the joke and called himself that word, I had to quite literally wash it out of my brain. Like I completely 
repress that memory because I wanted to keep liking him so bad. But I knew like if I remembered this, it would cause irreparable damage to my core. Like I would cringe so hard that I would fling myself all the way to Venus if I remembered this. So I completely washed that memory away until I later found it again when I was scrolling through our message history for fun. Number four, he kissed my forehead. He, he, could, he kissed me in the forehead to comfort me when I was sad. Bleach isn't enough, y'all. I need to be decapitated. I'm honestly too afraid to remember anything else. Just know that there was a lot of physical contact and really late night calls. So now that we know all this, I'm gonna tell you about the stories, okay? There are a few incidents. Number one, the lamb pie incident. How many oral points did I lose for this? Basically, we were in queue for a coffee shop at my school and I had an online lecture at around 8 a.m. Um, he had classes at 10 a.m. but he came really early so we went to this place to get food together and I was starving and I saw they had lamb pie. Ooh, I love lamb. I love pie. So I told him, I'm gonna get like a coffee and a lamb pie. And he said, ooh, the lamb pie looks good. I'm gonna get that too. So I go to order first and <laughs> and I get my coffee and I get my lamb pie. He orders next, but I notice he doesn't get his lamb pie. I just assume that he didn't feel like eating it anymore. We go and sit down and when my name was called, he went and got my coffee and lamb pie for me because he was sitting closer and I was like, oh, how thoughtful of him. He put my coffee down in front of me. Then I noticed he's still holding my lamb pie. And then he starts to tear open the packaging. And I was like, oh, how sweet. Is he opening it for me? And then he proceeds to take a bite out of it. And he doesn't, he doesn't stop. He ate my lamb pie. He thought that I ordered it for him. And he ate the whole thing. <laughs> and I need to tell you. That I think I deserve an award for being able to pull it off because this is what I wanted to react. This was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> internally, and I didn't want to embarrass him by being like, dude, that's my pie. Because I still really liked him at this time. So I just kind of looked at him and like, and was like, <laughs> and I was like, does it taste good? And he was like, yeah. So at this point, I'm fucking starving because I still don't have my food. I couldn't go line up to like get it again because my online class had just started and I didn't want to miss any classes, right? And he was done eating, he was just scrolling through his phone. So I kind of hinted at him, okay? I hinted at him. And I know that not everyone is Einstein when it comes to subtle hints. But okay, I told him, Oh, um, I really want to like get another pie because you fucking ate mine. But I can't queue right now because I'm in like classes. So I'm using, use your IQ brains here. I'm hinting at him. Can you go and order for me? Oh, no, no, this is what he did, okay? He was looking at his phone, right? Aww. <laughs> anyway, so I... Starved. That was so bad. I never told any of my friends until I fully got over him because I wanted to like him so bad. I wanted to maintain my crush so bad because it was so rare of me to get crushes. Number three probably has the most lore of all. It is called the X incident. Now this is where I may have made my first mistake. They were together for I think about less than a year and so at this point they had broken up for a few months already and he was still very much not over her, I think. In my defense, he, I was getting very mixed signals, okay? He was kissing my forehead and told me he loved me and cuddled with me. So naturally, I assumed that he might have been getting over her, but apparently not. <laughs> His passwords were still her birthday. And I still like them, oh my goodness. Um, number three made me watch videos of them kissing. Do <laughs> you know those um, videos online of fed up uh, videos of music? Especially music that was like trending on TikTok. And people would usually post those with like one tiny little photo at the center, right? For like their thumbnail. So he would make those videos basically. And um, he was searching up pictures of like couples to use as the photo. And these are basically what he was looking through on Pinterest because it was a love song. And then out of nowhere, he was like, 
What if I use a photo of me and my ex kissing? Hmm? And at this point, his ex already got a new partner. By the way, they had already gotten a new partner. They had moved on completely. I told him, hey dude, um, that's kind of insane. You can't just post a photo of you kissing your ex who already has a new partner without like their permission on a love song. Like, is that not cuckoo crazy? Am, am, I, am I missing something? And he was like, oh, but do you want to see videos of us kissing? Huh? Do you want to see videos of us kissing? I'm sorry. Did you bonk your head on cement? Why would I want that? And no, and then and then he pulls it out of his album. We were at the Taco Bell, okay? We were at the Taco Bell when this was happening. I need you to understand. Like there was not just one thing stressing me out. The Taco Bell food was also stressing me out. He pulls it out of his phone and then he just he just he just shoves it in my face and makes me watch. And I was like, first of all. Why are you recording vi the video of you and your ex making out? I don't know if it was to with their knowledge or not. Second of all, why do you still keep that video? Third of all, why are you shoving it in my face? <sighs> and then on that very same fucking day, okay? There was like this exhibit going on in my school and it was like themed around heartbreak and relationships and stuff. And there was those giant um, poster things. There was like, oh, I solemnly swear to something something. They'd have marker pens so that anyone can sign their name on it. So we go to sign our name when we went to check it out. And then he suddenly gasps and says, oh my god, someone here has the same name as my ex. And I was like, oh, okay. It's one of those names that you could find if you just search top 10 most popular English girl names. You know what this dude does? He proceeds to like write like a plus and then his own name and like a heart and take a picture of it. My bride, my, my bro. No, maybe it's just because I don't have any relationship experience. Like people who have had exes, like, is this a normal thing to do? But it was still a big L on me. Number four, the incident of being very weird around strangers. Okay, you know how sometimes you see an attractive person walk by, so you tell your friends like, whoa, that person was really cute or pretty. He does that, but in a more like um freaky manner. We, there was one time like this girl walked past us and she had like the exact same hair that I did in this photo and my friend was like yo that person looks like how you did like back then and I was like oh yeah they do and he says ooh wow she's hot I wanna mm. you wanna what you wanna what duly noted it wasn't just that okay it was also one other time when I met like a fan or like someone who watches my video, this guy was super nice. Like we bump into each other occasionally in the school too. And at one point, I think the third time we bumped into each other and greeted each other, um, State was there. And he waited until this guy left before being like, oh, who was that? He was so cute. I wanna, mm, I wanna, mm. What? <laughs> what? Leave my followers alone! Leave my followers alone! I repel you! What the fuck? Like this poor dude just wanted to say hi to me. And then he just, he just wouldn't stop being like, I would mmm him like mmm. Mm, police! Number five, and this is the last one. This is kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back, okay? It is called the new girl incident. So one day he tells me that there is this girl from his old school that was coming to our new school. We're gonna call her Hibiscus. And she was very pretty, okay? She was very conventionally attractive and she was very sweet, which is what my interaction with her was like. Apparently, according to some friends I met, uh, she might be the devil in disguise. But I never got to see that side of her, so we're gonna continue. A few days later, when me and State see Hibiscus in the distance again, I commented to him that, oh, she looks really pretty because she was wearing like a really cute outfit. And you know what this fucker says to me? He gets mad and tells me to get in line. And I was like, dude, I don't want to shoot my shot with her. Not everyone is like you. You fucking shoot your shot with a raccoon on the street. I'm just giving her a compliment. Hello? And he's like, okay, watch me flirt with her. Hello? He tells me to watch him flirt with her and I was like, no, I don't want to watch you flirt with her, hello? And he was like, no, watch me, watch me, and he goes. Obviously, I don't watch him flirt with her. I'm having a conversation with my friend and eating like anchovies as a snack. He comes back like 10 minutes later and was like, did you see that? Did you watch that? 
And I was like, no, I, of obviously I wasn't watching you flirt with her. Like, do you, can you imagine how awkward that is? To be like having a conversation with someone and then there's just this guy at the distance being like, Hmm. Why would I watch this? And he gets mad at me for not watching. He was like, why didn't you watch? What? Am I crazy? Am I the one who's insane here? And then afterwards, okay, there was a day where I had to try to use the subway train for the first time because the school was in like the big city and I've never gotten to really use the subway train before. I wasn't very good with direction. So I went on it with Hibiscus and State, okay? I'm making a lot of jokes, chatting with Hibiscus a lot and she's like laughing and all that. And I look over to my side at State because I noticed he's been quiet and he's just there like looking really upset for some reason all right she asked him something about like her stop and he responds like really kindly and then i noticed that it might be my stop soon i asked him to confirm like oh is it my stop next and he goes like this okay will you be in trouble if i don't tell you huh and he repeats again are you going to be in trouble if i don't tell you and i i, I they just don't know how to respond i was like i mean i guess if there's like a huge sign or something at the side when we get there I'll know. And he said, then look at the sign. Okay. All this happened in front of Hibiscus and she just kind of went like, oh. And I went quiet because I was like, well, what was the point of that? And I think I stopped talking to him for like a week because I, at this point, I was like pretty much gonna move on already. Like I did not want to pursue anything with this guy. But I still thought we could be good friends, right? One day he texted me and was like, hey, do you want to have lunch together? It's been so long since we've had lunch together. And I said, sure, why not? So I waited for his class to be done. I waited one fucking hour, okay? An hour later, he texted me. Hey, um, actually, I'm gonna go see Hibiscus instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I was so annoyed. I think he could tell that I was upset because all I said was okay and like I didn't add anything else. I didn't add the stickers I usually do. And then he texts me like, hey, how was the food? I'm really sorry. Like, how was it? How, how was everything? And I was like, you know what? Okay, now I feel bad for being nonchalant. Maybe he didn't mean it. So I took a picture of the food and I was like, oh no, it's all good. We're eating this. How are you? He left me on red. The moment I acted like everything was okay. They say that love is blind, but I think love just straight up lobotomized me because how did I let this guy do all this to me? How did I? But anyways, yeah, that's it. That was my horrifying experience with this dude. And I wish he could say more. This is what my friend who was there to bear witness to majority of it has to say. So yeah, anyways, love is dead to me. I will never pursue a relationship of any kind in the future ever again. Do you know the way everyone looks at me when I recall the lamp I experienced to them? It is a mix of pity and also... What is wrong with you? Why did you keep liking him? So yeah, and that's the end of this video. Let me know how many aura points I lost from having this crush. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Surprise punch.